Well, welcome to another live stream. Here we are. You and me. Me and you. What's the difference? Um, you know, here we go. We're going to do another live stream. And what could go wrong? It's like my favorite saying lately right now. What could go wrong? Okay, so today's live stream um, is going to be working on some voxel art. Let's get some voxels started right now. I want to work on some, uh, my goal for the, ne the rest of the month is to start the battleground. So working on Wraithbinder, it's a, um, a multiplayer, 10 player, online, real time, uh, battle royale game where your combat is like Songbringer. So it's like Songbringer versus other people, last person left alive wins, and um, some twists, of course. So I announced that last live stream, and this live stream I'm going to be starting to create the battlegrounds for all that. So I'm going to voxel up a suit of armor, um, because when you die you become a wraith, and you attract a suit of armor and you get to fight on. So um, let's draw some suits of armor. I'm thinking I'm going to use the suit of armor I had in Songbringer um, floating in the cryo chamber in one of the caves, and his name was... Um, the code name I created for that character, Kane? I think it was Kane. Let's get that opened up. I think that was going to be in Songbringer. No, Songbringer's got raw. Raw, sheets, shadow, cage. That's it, cage. Floating. Cage floating. Zero. Right? So, it's kind of a... <laughs> looks kind of weird looking at it right here. Almost looks like he's wearing some um, desert camo. But uh, in the game, it looks a lot better because of the lighting. So, but let's check it out. Let's see what it looks like as a voxel version. Um, let's go ahead and get that opened up in Magicka. I've got, um, in Magicka, I've got my palette already created. This is uh, Wraithbinder's palette. And I'm just going to drag in the ping file, and that gives you a one pixel or one voxel thick uh, version of your model. So let's go, okay, floating, floating, floating. There we go. What's the difference between these? Oh, yeah, he's like going up and down. Not much is changing. You can tell the background is a little bit. Let's do that. That's a nice one to do. For, well, no, we probably want to do one of these other ones because we don't want it to have, because this is a 3D voxel engine, we don't want it to have as many of those two-dimensional um, shadings going on. You can tell we're using some different colors because it's snapping to the closest ones, but that'll do for now. Let's see what that looks like um, immediately. With I'm not even going to make it thicker than that. Actually, maybe let's just make it a little thicker. So we'll make them 20 thick, and we'll just duplicate all this. How's the stream health today? Let's check it out real quick. Oh, damn, we got some drop frames today. What's up with that? She usually got great internet here. Huh. That's weird. Well, I hope that's not too much of an issue. Okay. So, it's about that thick. <laughs> it's a little bit too thick, but... It's okay. We'll, we'll sculpt this out and make this look cooler in a second. Um, oh. I just realized that... Our Magicka voxel folder is all wrong. So that's going to be in applications. I need to uh, swizzle up these sim links here. Those are in Magicka's uh, 082. No, no, no. 0991. That's the one I've been preferring lately. Okay, so there we go. 
Um, move those. Sing link them back up. See, we have to reset magic. We might have to reset. There we go. Oh yeah, it's it's cool. It's got our folder. I guess we don't have to reset. Maybe Magicka is gonna be smart enough to figure that out there. Um, just call that armor for a second. And let's get an entity so we can see this inside the game. Just check its overall colors before we go playing with the voxels. Alright, so we got a suit now. And we'll go to systems so that we can go and create one. Um, we'll create it near. Um, where do we put that fire.txt? So this is gonna kind of hacky, but we'll do it like this, where we do um, just one particular point on the grid will be um, what we're targeting. So team num, I think it's, I think we want team number one. Yeah, because it would be team index otherwise. Okay, so team number is one, and. Math sign of no um I don't need to check that I don't think yeah we just want to do dx equals three and dy equals zero let's try that make this suit I keep typing suitor it's kind of weird. Okay, we got a suit. Let's open up that suit. Make sure it's the right um, voxel file name. Okay, global include. Sure. Uh, well, it might be right. Well, global include for now. Showbox. Don't need that for now. This we're going to make. Oh, we called it armor, didn't we? Oh, well. Armor.vox and just one frame for now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Actually, we can do it just like that. It doesn't have a light or particles, but it totally should. It should probably have both those things. But let's comment them out for a second. And it should have a collision. No, um, regular. What category? Shoot. What are the categories these days? It's been a while since I added a category. Category um, building. It's kind of a building. Okay, let's see if it's even there. What what happened to fight? What? What? Whoa, what the heck? 
is going on here? Come here. All right, cool. It's there. Still, it's ugly, that's for sure. But it's there. Why can't I collide with it? Oh, oh, because we don't have that. Wait. Oh, because building is, yeah. Tactically, we want to make this permanent in order for the collision to say, you shouldn't walk on that. Okay, cool. Okay, so we can just start voxeling this up, make it look a little better, but you know what? I don't know, I don't like these colors. Let's go ahead and do a grayscale version. Yeah, let's try a grayscale version. Then we can switch back to the Rate Finder logo. Whoa! Or Rate Finder palette. It's crazy. Weird. Let's see grayscale. Ah, oh, it's so thin. It looks a lot better grayscale. But let's play around with the voxels. See what we can get to look cool. You sort of have bluish yellow. Blue. Oh. See, I really want to open the... Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I know what's going on. I need to make a grayscale and then use the um, Wraith Binder palette. And then you... and Yeah, so I need to export grayscale from here, basically. Let's make that grayscale here. Can I just copy... Save this on the desktop. And we got the Wraith Binder palette. And this. Whoa! Okay, that's a lot better. Yeah, cool. Now we got some even some different hues in there too. Okay, so let's play around with those colors. Let's we want to keep it 2D for a second. Oh, we gotta get the right kind of camera here. We got an orthographic camera in this game. And I find it's better to pick to voxel. I was about to say pixel, but uh to voxel like this. With uh by that I mean um with this shadow off.
This is weird. I'm trying to attach a voxel to the bottom of that and it's not working. Oh well, let's just paint. Paint first and then we'll make it 3D. Oh, there is a voxel there. So I'm just trying to think about this kind of like pixel art for now. And then I'll extrude it all, make it 3D. What's this even look like with these kind of crazy color schemes going on? That's oh, kind of cool actually. There it goes. That was weird. Okay, now it's working. I'm going to clean these pixels up a bit because um, I think it needs it. Man, it's really hard to tell what's, what's a voxel and what's not here. Oh yeah, because he had these long... Oh, this color right here is super hard to see.
The only reason I can think that I might have some drop frames right now is because it's crazy windy today. I'm not able to hear it. It is like howling out there. cool all right let's make it 3d man it's not working again what the heck's going on here I'm trying to draw that voxel Oh, because it's not a voxel. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's something I can do here. I can mirror on uh, x-axis, is that it? Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Save me some time. What are these dark pixels doing up there? Dog. I'm just gonna forever forget about whether I'm calling them pixels or voxels, because they're the same, the same thing.
kind of looks like Optimus Prime. In a way. Not to bring up a horrible movie reference or anything. Not to berate a movie. But I never liked those ones myself. Don't know why. I never liked any of them. Sure did like them as a kid, though. Playing with Transformers was sweet. Man, so I uh, started this stream so I could chat with people, like, for real, like, live. Um, but nobody's chatting. I wonder if it's because there's some issue. Because usually there's people chatting. Might be that there's some Twitch shut down or something like that. Or error. There's a 404 error with Twitch right now. This content cannot be found at this time. So, yep, I'll just keep talking with myself. It's pretty fun. I do it every day anyways. It's kind of a thing, you know, you sit here talking the whole time. Going to a party tomorrow? That's pretty fun. By party, I mean like live music event. Excited, looking forward to that. <clears throat> See, one issue with trying to make these voxels without the shadow, check it out. This is kind of like really illustrates this point right here. If you put it like that, you're in this orthographic view and you have no shadows on, it can be really tough to tell which voxels are which. But if you turn on shadows, then you can be like, oh, look, I get it now. But it kind of gives you less realism. I guess I should, I'm going to leave it on for now, actually. It's going to be really helpful with this model right now. But. Usually that is a hindrance to have these shadows. It's kind of it kind of ruins the whole because the the way the game works is it takes the voxel purely as whatever color the voxel is. It draws it in the rendering engine that way. It doesn't draw each pixel with a shadow on it. That would be impossible at that pixel depth that we've got going on, or pixel resolution, I should say. Dark colors are super hard to tell. What's what? Whoa. That's not what I meant.
Okay, that's super rough. Let's get a little, um, let's still do a little check here, see how it's looking. Uh, see, that illustrates my point about the shadows in Magicka Voxel. So you can see when you're looking at it from this angle, all those gray colors are kind of blurring together. Uh, but of course they don't here in Magicka. If we go to this wall, look at it from there. If we get the shadows on, we can tell. But if we turn it off, we're like, oh, see, that's kind of how it looks in the game, right? That's what the whole um, pixel, the 3D pixel art look kind of is doing here so um oh that needs a show oh, hold on we don't have a shadow let's cast shadows is that right yeah let's, let's try let's try casting some shadows that might help a lot save fault everything in the future is broken it's seg fault. It's because I had to cast shadows here. Seg fault again. Not due to the cast shadow. Okay, well, what's happening? Don't tell me I have to recompile everything. Why would I? Okay, I had Xcode closed because it does use a little bit of CPU in the background, doing its little auto indexing all the time. So let's open it up and we'll run it from here and see what the heck this seg fault's about. I'm not even getting a crash report. That's weird. It's just seg fault, no crash report. Alright, let's see what's up. Oh, we need an I oh. oh, this is awesome. We need to do an icon today. We've got this <laughs> this like Crazy scan line icon going on here, which something just happened to make an error and boom, the icon turned into this weird thing. Let's make that an actual icon today. Uh, but anyways, um, first let's run it and see if we can figure out what the heck is, why is it seg faulting? It's probably not for any, it probably is just going to work in Xcode and it'll seg fault in the command line, which it does some from time to time. Even Songbringer did that and I don't know why. All right, what's up? Go. One, two, three, go. Running now. Yeah, go ahead and reopen it. Let's see what's what's up within this Pandora's box. Okay, it is an assertion failure. Maybe that's uh, that's why it's not. It wasn't um. So if I could have just I could have checked the log. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, if I, after this runs, I could have checked the log. Render component. Model get cat. Oh. What are you trying to load here? What what model is this? Oh, current and M is probably wrong or frames. Oh, probably current and M not frames. Okay, so this is the render component. We're gonna go look for that current and M. There it is. Look at the frames. Zero items. Oh well, that's super easy to fix. Glad I debugged that. Now we don't got to worry about it anymore. That's in model or render component. When it's loading, it's models. And we need to just check this current and nim frames. Oh, that's just my own vector, so I can do that. It's already got its own explicit, explicit operator bool. Love explicit operator bools everywhere. Put them everywhere. Every class, <laughs> every structure. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're actually paying attention to this, and um, an explicit operator bool is basically just an operator bool that's explicit. <laughs> no, um, 
An operator bool is something you would do to make this is right. Current enum is a pointer to a structure, a custom structure that I've created, right? You can create an operator bool on any structure or any class. And what that does is whenever it it makes it whenever you're um, contextually um, casting, right? So right now, if you put put a variable in ifs, right? If you put a variable right here, whoop, that means you're you're um, casting it to a bool a boolean, right? Whatever it is. So um, adding an operator bool allows your class or structure to, um, you know, create your own methodology for that operator bool, whatever that boolean means to you right it's zero or one right but what does that mean um, and for the vector class that this is representing right here it's got its own operator bool and with an explicit operator bool this is pretty dope because you want to make you want to make things explicit if you can because what if you accidentally convert it to a bool right you don't ever want to accidentally convert this is a very important structure here this is like could be anything it could have tons of complex co functionality right going on um, but you want that to um, that operator bool to be explicit because you never want to accidentally convert that to a bool. You want it to be explicitly converted to a bool only when necessary. And if you were ever in a situation where you did want to, like, let's say I wanted to, to um, check current and in frames, but I didn't want to do it inside some kind of context like an if, I could do um, bool b equals current and in frames and that would also call that operator bool why is that not working oh because it's not explicit so that's this is a good example right here make that explicit and all of a sudden boom it works so anyways sorry and rant let's get this running again now we figured out that bug we can't set a box for something that doesn't have a box It's gonna work. Why? Why was that even triggered? It's now all, all of a sudden it's gone. What did I do? What happened? Oh, why does it say armor? Armor. Why does it even say armor? Some weird stuff going on here. Okay, all I wanted to do was cast shadows. Please, let's just do some cast casting of shadows. Right now. Shadow casting. Uh yes. Oh, it worked. That looks pretty cool too. Okay, let's see how that looks. Doesn't it look a lot better? It does look better. You can kind of tell what's a little bit more of that this is a 3D model. It's still pretty square. I guess we could make it a little bit better before we move on to the next little project right now. Let's make it a little less boxy and square.
Okay, it's a little bit better. Did it work? Kind of. Okay, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and check that in. For now, I don't need to really check this in. I can kind of do that. I'm kind of just playing around right now. I'll save checking in for later. Okay, what I really need to do, actually one of the most important things I can do, is... actually go into the code and set up the whole arena so that it it represents the design I have for this uh, map for the battlegrounds so um, let's go ahead and do that we'll mock up this battlegrounds right now in code start that process um, let me get the I have a design where would that design image be oh by the way if anybody's actually watching this stream right now um, I'm sorry if you're if you're chatting and I'm not responding. Oh, it's I'm getting so many drop frames today. Uh, I'm probably not even streaming. Well, I'll just upload this to YouTube later. I don't know if this is if anybody is actually if you are actually watching and I'm not re responding. Sorry about that. My chat window is just empty right now. I think I'm not even streaming. But anyways, okay, let's just stop. Forget about that. Um, forgetfulness, such an important power. Okay. Um, let me open up the image of the map I drew for the battlegrounds. I think it would be in current. Let's open up current folder and scroll through it by time. By date modified. We're there. Okay, but maybe it's called Battleground Diagram. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So this is pretty sweet. This is what the battleground I'm imagining is gonna look like. These are temples where if you when you become a wraith and you're dead, but you're still fighting, you're at you're just at wraith. Um, you can actually get imbued with certain elemental powers. You can become an ice wraith or a fire wraith or an acid wraith or a lightning wraith. Um, so there's these temples. Inside the middle there's the boss. These little gray lines connecting everything are lanes. Um, there's items all over speed around the map. There's like, you know, bombs and the ghost sword and things like that you can pick up. All those are going to be in those little item locations. And there's going to be some teleports, too. There's going to be some areas where you can teleport from one side of the map to the other, but I don't have any of those marked. Um, then the, all these P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, those are where the players start. So here's the map. We're going to start with, it, with this. And in fact... I think we might actually make this whole image... Let's open up... Well... Yeah, let's just copy this whole this whole image here. Copy to a new, and let's rotate it 45 degrees so we can get. Um, I'm thinking maybe we'll put this the whole. Yeah, the whole arena will actually look like that. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but in in the game's memory, it will it'll be like this. This will down here in this bottom left right here. This will be zero zero on the x y on the two dimensional uh, plane that describes the bottom of the arena. So this would be this would be technically like one one or the the far reaches of the arena would actually be more like sixteen hundred comma sixteen hundred. But you get the point, right? If we get if we get it at this angle, right? We set up the whole arena like this. All we got to do is rotate the camera forty five degrees to get it back to how it was like that. So 
with the camera. And I'm thinking the default camera rotation will at least be a 45 degree or negative 45 degrees, something like that. And I guess we could set up player, set the players up a little bit differently, maybe. Maybe this is player one down here. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Okay, I'm thinking probably too the arena will be about how big it is now. These will be lanes. In the middle we'll have trees. So this will be like, you know, cover to trees. Let's try that in green. These will be, well, trees, rocks, whatever. For now, they're rocks. Right? Out here, there'll be more rocks. Same thing. Over here, some more rocks. Here. Here, in this section. Or sky. Shoot. This could be any kind of um, terrain or anti-terrain that you just can't walk on. Right, it's a block that you can mess up and hurt and stuff like that, but you can never quite destroy. Maybe it's some sky. But anyways, let's get that started. I think. Okay, so how? Where's where to start? Dang. Um. You know what? Let's start in the very middle. Let's start working on it right there. Right in the very middle. Right right in the very middle over here. Maybe the very middle there. <laughs> you know, the actual very middle. Right there. Let's start working there. I want to create a circle there. Circle of empty space. This is going to be changing a lot of code. Wait, oh, let's, let's check in this render component fix real quick. That's pretty important. That's atomic as well. It's one tiny little change. Um, fix bug if loading a, an empty model. Oh, yo, what's up? Somebody chatting. The chat is working. Azenris, what's up, brother? Hey. How you been, man? It's been a while since we chatted. Is the chat is is the stream even working today? I'm sitting here and it's crazy windy out. Makes me think maybe the internet's not working so well. Okay, so we can go ahead and change all of this. This is a function that's called create overworld entity that's basically just creating an entity at a certain position. Sweet. Nice. Glad to hear that. How, how's everything been? Yep, and I'm, I am working on a new game. This is called Wraithbinder. It's, um, it's basically Songbringer combat, but and it's online, multiplayer, and the last person left alive wins, and if you die, you become bound to the person that killed you as a wraith. You keep fighting for the whole, for the rest of the whole match, even even though you're a wraith, but you're on the side of the person that killed you. We can go ahead and kill the whole underworld thing. There's not going to be an underworld. Maybe there will be an underworld. Okay, I'm not going to kill the, the underworld yet. <laughs> that might be cool, actually, to have an underworld. Yeah, cool. I'm glad to glad to be um, glad to be making this game. Tell you the truth, I uh, I had you know started this whole project thinking I was going to do something a lot more complicated with Load Dragger. Um, this is about uh, six months into it. Yep, 
I've basically just been creating the voxel engine mostly. I've worked a little bit on gameplay and art and things like that, but uh, mostly mostly a uh, voxel engine in about six months in, and I'm hoping to have a playable late alpha slash early beta by the end of this year. So maybe Christmas time, um, you can play it, play the beta with me. I'll need some people to be playing with. This is a multiplayer game. So that means I get to open it up sooner than I would have something like Songbringer, which was a single player adventure where, you know, you kind of want to, you kind of want it when you're beta testing something like Songbringer, you, pro you, you probably want to wait till the end of the whole project to play it, you know, once it's all finished. But this, this is something different. This is multiplayer. So I need people to play as soon as possible, as soon as it's plausible to even do that. Okay, yeah, let's let's go ahead and kill everything except for the player start point. Uh, I think the player's already been created. So, yeah, let's go ahead and just add an if zero right here and we'll kill all this stuff. We're not going to have much around here. for the moment. And I think we also have the player. But the player needs to be in the... We'll start the player in the middle. So right now, the player is being started at... Right at, right at the base. Okay, we can just do this. Um, AX is going to be zero. That's the middle screen. The AX is the screen number, actually. And it's a negative, like, negative three, two, three. Um, and then SX is the position on the screen. So the tile, you could say, or the block on the screen that we're going for. So that should put us in the middle of the screen. And all we have is some ground and some water, I think. So let's see what this looks like. We're going to start creating an area to fight the boss. Still standing in my closet? No, it's been it's been quite a journey here uh, since the days of standing in the closet coding. I'm actually coding in a van right now, of all places. This is a van I've been working on um, and living in and traveling in and turning into like a coding van. Basically, I can go pretty much head anywhere and just code wherever I'm at. Sweet. Okay, so we now we have um, now we have some water here in the middle, but we want this we want this to actually be uh, ground that you can step on, and then we'll make it circular as well. And this will be the area where you fight the boss, and then everything else is gonna have some like pillars of stone, pillars of stone everywhere. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm I never. I've always really liked travel a lot, and um, since last year, I've been sort of combining travel with work. So, um, like last year, I worked on um, uh, Songbringer, actually the Songbringer DLC from Thailand. So I lived in Thailand. I, you know, it was basically just like living in the United States, except everything was cheaper and was way warmer, and um, it was a cool life. You know what I mean? Like living. Um, working all week on Songbringer, and then on the weekends I take the scooter out and tra travel around. But now I'm doing the same thing. I'm combining travel with work. I'm I'm working on uh, Wraithbinder while I'm also living this van lifestyle where I can kind of be anywhere. It's kind of neat. I could be in big cities in an instant, or I could be out in the, the woods or up in the mountains. But I, the the problem is I can't stream from the mountains. Not good enough internet out there. Don't get what's up. Yeah, things are coming along, man. Today, uh, uh, oh, so the, so you were, you probably saw me working on this. This is the Wraithbinder key art. So I finally, um, I added a little bit of, um, I finished the logo. I added some more, like, crackling, sparkly, uh, lightning, and I added some different colors. So I, I played with a whole bunch of different hues as well. Yeah, you saw this on, you saw this on Twitter with the with the hues and all that 
Thanks for your comments. Appreciate that. That was nice to get some people's thoughts on what was the best hue? Because I was like, I'm not sure. And it was really nice to get all that feedback. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you voted for this one. And in fact, most of the people voted for this one. With the pink background and the cyan colored logo. And, uh, oh, that was a crazy gust of wind. Um, so some people voted for the purple one. Some people wrote, voted for the red one. Um, but most people, most people always mentioned this one, this top, the top left or the pink cyan one. So I, I went with that. Uh, but that was actually the original too. It was the easy decision for me because I'm like, this is what I originally designed. And everybody ended up liking it. So I'm like, sweet, let's stick with that. Yeah, right on. Yeah, right. It's kind of, I like it. I like the bold pinkness of it because it's like why would a badass warrior be all pink <laughs> you know it's kind of like not exactly the badass color so I love I love doing it for its uh, you know for its funniness in that sense or its uh, juxtaposition its contrast you know so now I'm setting up the arena trying to get the arena all like looking like this actually here's the here's the arena the battleground diagram this is kind of what the uh the battlegrounds will look like all these p's are players um these are temples where when you become a wraith and you're dead you can actually get elemental powers so like if you're a if you're a regular wraith you can become a fire wraith or an acid wraith or a lightning wraith and here in the middle there's the boss which anyone can fight and if you beat the boss, you become the boss. If you're killed by the boss, you become a wraith to the boss. Um, and there's items and stuff like that. So I'm basically doing that design, but I'm tilting it at an angle so it's really nice and efficient um, code-wise, memory-wise. Yeah, right on. Your new phone and earbuds are that color? Sweet. That's, so, that's awesome. What kind of earbuds do you have, man? I just got some earbuds I really like. And they kind of transform my world. Like, I didn't know good earbuds were this good. It's, it's so cool having good earbuds. You can have music. Where, like, oh, It's just new, new kind of music. KZSZSN. Are they good? How are they? Okay, so we want to make that empty. Oh, it is Manhattan distance. This already is a circle. Let's make it nine. Maybe that's what we need. Really? Cool. They sound good, too. I imagine they do. Okay, let's do all these um, pillars, which are currently called trees. So we're going to fill the entire arena with trees, except we'll have a blank space in the middle. We should be starting in the blank space in the middle. Maybe we'll put the suit of armor in the middle for now to kind of represent that that's where the boss will be. Cool. All right. We got a... I'm not sure why this isn't circular. It's giving me a diamond, perfect diamond shape. Oh, because it is, it is indeed... Um, using Manhattan distance, which will give us a diamond. Okay, we want to actually do a circle shape. So we would need to measure the cosine and sine of things. Yeah, removable cable, Bluetooth module, sweet. Oh, and the the tips keep them in. Ha. <laughs> Yeah, I got some of those too. Oh, and they make it such a huge difference. Such a huge difference. I can like work out and shake my head and stuff and nothing happens. Stay in perfect. Okay, let's not worry about the whole Manhattan or making that a circular just yet. Or should we? Nah, yeah, we'll keep it as a diamond for a second. Okay, everything should be filled with those things. And So let's start doing the radial lines of... Um, 
everything. So we want to do some 45 degree radial, 45 degree radial line all the way like that with the variable width, and then a 45 here with variable width, but it's um, stops right here. Okay, let's get those two lines started. I think we've already got. Uh, here's the river. If abs D mid, yeah, D mid. So these are going to be like the main pathways. Um, D mid, this variable right here, is actually the the middle line going through the entire arena. Um, so D mid is the distance from the current position to that center or that diagonal line. So if abs D mid is less than four and Distance from the center? What's it going to be the distance from the total center? CXCY is the distance from the center of the current screen. No, no, it's it's the point of the current screen. DX is the current distance from the middle of the current screen. So we want like DDX or something like that that would represent... Um, We want, uh, oh, oh, we want, it's kind of like this. Um, center distance? I guess, yeah, we want center distance. And that is the current screen, yes, SX plus screen size times AX. Um, plus SY. Oh, SY is. Ugh. Why is it all like so weird? S Y yeah yeah well I think it's I think it's this way S Y plus green size dot Y times A Y I think that's how it should be right that's the Manhattan dis oh why don't we just do Manhattan distance yeah let's just do Manhattan distance here math. Manhattan distance from zero zero to SX plus screen size that X times AX SY plus screen size of Y times AY. That's the center distance. Okay, that's let's hope that works. And then if the D mid is less than or equal, less than four, and the center dist is less than or equal to about two screens worth, so screen size dot x times two. Is that, it's not x at, cool, it's just regular x. And all of these will be pathways with nothing. Okay, hopefully that works, and we have four 45 degree pathways going out from the center point. Oh. Looks like we've got two of them. We didn't get the other. Okay, good. That's going around about the right distance, and this whole center distance thing is should be uh, should be right. Well, we're missing the pathway that's supposed to be there and here. Oh, because that's a D mid. D. We also need another kind of D mid, which would be the other line, which would be I think. 
S Y. It's like that. Yeah, okay, we'll keep, I was thinking about changing dmid to a different variable name, but I think, okay, I'm going to put a comment here. dmid is the line going from top left of battle rounds to bottom right. Um, and we, I guess DMID, what would you call that? Uh, perp, perpendicular, so DMID P, let's call it DMID P. Uh, DMID P is the line going from the bottom left of the battlegrounds to the top right. I hope. All right, let's see if that works too. Um, we got abs d mid is less than four, or abs d mid p is less than four. And once again, I'm hoping that's the right mathematics to get the swizzly math that we're trying to get. Swizzly magic, I mean. Bam! It worked! Oh my god, I can't believe it. It's great. I always love it when things work. So we got a pathways going off on all those different angles. You know what? This is not big enough to fight a boss right here. Let's make that bigger. So let's make this... Um, let's go whole whopping 12 there. And we'll do three screens for these pathways here. These pathways are supposed to be pretty big. Yeah, now I really do want that to be circular. This is looking about the right size though. So, uh, yeah, that could be a that could be big enough to fight a boss. I could do I could do a a square and a diamond to actually get a little bit more of a circle shape, but yet still keep this whole forty five ninety feeling going. Oh, see that's the normal perspective right there. <laughs> Dang, I'm getting confused which is forty five and which is not forty five. All right, cool. That's good enough. Let's start putting these um uh these areas right here where the temples are gonna be. These look like they're gonna be about the same area as the boss but anyways we'll put those in now we'll call this the center boss area I know right oh I got one of those oh yeah I should put that put that on um, I think it's in one of these debug styles I've got already it shows the camera angle yeah, that's that's gonna be helpful today, I think. We'll turn that on. Does that one have it? I can't <laughs> it's blocked by my light. But I I don't actually I don't know if that's that one shows it. That one definitely shows it, I think. Okay, anyways, maybe it's not that helpful. Not as helpful as I thought it'd be this time. Okay, so we're gonna do center of the boss area. And now we'll do um, temples. Um, the temples are going to be all right. So A X. Oh, this is actually pretty easy. If abs A X equals 
abs a y no fab abs a x equals something and abs a y equals something and the Manhattan distance is less than something and I think that should be a little less than that bot let's make a nine actually nine for that not nah, probably ten. Okay, so now we should have some areas. Let's see if that's even the right. Um, the right AXAY distance for those to be at. So we'll walk down one of these pathways. Let's see what we got here at the end. Whoa, nothing, nothing at all. What's? Oh, it's way over here. If AX equals two, oh, so AX two is way over there. Okay, so we do need to like AX1 maybe. Yeah, that's more like it. Cool. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. Whoa, stuck in a wall. Yeah, this could be an area where you find a temple. Okay, and let's close off those pathways. Screen size dot x. Let's do let's see what screen size dot x times two gives us just the right distance of pathway there. And maybe the pathway should be a little. We got dmid is less than four. Right there, that's um, oh yeah, that worked, cool. That works great. Oh, what, what? It didn't work there. So these, wait, wait. I think that's zero. Okay, so the, eh, what? Whoa, oh wait, this one worked? This one went far enough? That one went far enough? That one went far enough, but this one didn't? What? Is my center distance wrong? That math looks fine to me. Ooh, that's so weird. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that and move on to the next thing. I don't wanna spend too long on one, any particular little niggly piggly thing. I don't wanna spend too long on the tiny stuff. I wanna spend a good amount of time on the important stuff, which means mocking up this arena, getting this up to about the right lines of the right lanes, the right items, the right areas for all this empty stuff. If I could just get, if I could just get empty, empty lines wherever I need them, that's what I need. All right, so we need to do. These are like, uh, those are the main pathways, then the temples. Then we'll do. Actually, we could put temples first there. These are the. We'll call this the, um, the 45 pathways coming from center boss area. And these are the 45 degree pathways extending from temples. So the demid's got to be a little smaller. In fact, let's make these, let's try five for the, oh, what? Try five for that there. I'll make these three, let's see what three looks like. And this is less than maybe four. 
This should extend almost the whole arena, actually. The whole battlegrounds. Okay, yeah, we've exhausted the entire battlegrounds there. In fact, maybe we should make some more entities. Okay, that didn't quite go all the way. This went all the way here. This one? Oh, man, this is so weird. That one didn't go all the way. That one didn't go very far at all. That is so weird. I gotta get others. Oh, the math has gotta be wrong here somewhere. That one didn't go all the way. <sighs> Why does this one go and the others don't? It doesn't make any sense. All right, how how do these paths feel? Are these wide enough? Okay, that's really that's not wide enough. You can't be doing battle in the three three wide area there. Five is nice and big. Four is like minimum. Okay, I guess we can start carving some of these lines that go straight, horizontal, and vertical between the temples. So that would be if abs ax equals 1 or abs ay equals 1. And the distance from the dx, wait a minute, oh, okay, okay, I think we need to do, I think we need to break this down like this abs ax equals 1 and and the dy is less than 4 should be it actually Let's see what that looks like Oh, what? Uh, that, that chopped it off way too soon. Uh. That's not right at all. This is starting to make me think I actually do need to check on why the math isn't quite working yet. Maybe I'm assuming something.
Yeah, this is still like it was. Dang, I just want... Temples are at abs ax equals one and Let's go ahead and show show the center distance. By adding some flame entities. Whoa, I've never tried to create that many lights before. Oh, center distance is 10. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so this, the center of the arena is not the... It's not in the right place. Either that or center distance is totally wrong. Oh, what am I... Hold on. Okay, so one of those is wrong, either D mid, no wait, what's the... Oh, we don't need these lane markers anymore either. Okay, this is a really smart thing here, setting this center distance up. I think this is DX. DX is... No, no, that's a... Okay, DX would be from the middle of the screen. So it is SX and SY. Let's do one more flame entity. I'm gonna do a flame entity at SX equals zero and SY equals zero and AX equals negative three, I think, and AY equals negative three. That would, oh, that's based on arena size, which is 5.5. Five. Okay. It's negative 4. 5.5. Five. No, this is negative 2. So 
So that should put a fire at the very lower left of the whole arena. Period. Oh, I, get, I do need to see the camera angle. Alright, all right, light, you gotta be moved for a second. I can't see anything. Okay, that's not the one. Two seventy. Oh. There's zero. Okay. Oh, it worked. There's certainly a weird color, though, coming off that. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I must have some math going wrong, because I got way too many uh, flames going. Still doesn't explain why rock's all white, though. Okay, so technically, that's the middle of the arena, and white... Oh. So then, I guess Demid. What? Glitter! Glitter mode! What's up, Salad? Howdy. Oh, you know what? It's going good, man. Yeah. It's going good. It's a crazy windy day. S sitting here in the van coding. I finished the uh, the Wraithbinder um, key art image. Really happy with how this all turned out. So, I can use that for like icons and... Oh, dude, that would be fun. Let's do the let's do the icon right now. That would be super fulfilling. Hey, what's up? What's up, brother? How you doing? You like it? You like color scheme? I asked people on Twitter what their favorites were. So this was this was the favorite. This was the crowd favorite. The pink and cyan. I did a whole bunch of different versions of it. Um, but yeah, let's make this an icon. Yes, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, oh, so, yeah, so Van, sorry about that. I missed your uh, your comment there. I saw it and then forgot about it because I'm so good at forgetting. Um, I'm coding from a vehicle. I'm inside a van. This is my home and studio for making games right now. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, like, traveling around in a van and um being in a whole bunch of different places and always being comfortable wherever i am i have a home and i have everything i need to code right here so it's pretty neat i have a refrigerator too i feel like such a such a an adult i have a refrigerator i have my own sink um i've built all this stuff by hand myself actually i've had some help along the way but uh uh yeah particularly my stepdad's helped me out a lot my real dad's helped me out a lot um, I even have a membership now where I'm at this like co-working place that has all these awesome tools like a band saw and all that. So it's, it's been fun. But anyways, I, I like coding here. Yo, Pete Wally, what's up? Yep. I have good cellular. So I have the, I got Verizon. It's, it's pretty good. Most, most places Verizon's best. I also have a, um, Sprint phone so I can sometimes stream on that, but Sprint's always not as good. Seems like. Um, but yeah, I finally, so the funny thing was I had no idea how to get Wi-Fi for the longest time because I was always like, ah, the Wi-Fi doesn't work in the van. The Wi-Fi is just pure crap. 
for some reason I could be right outside the van and the and the, the Wi-Fi would be good and then I go right inside the van and it didn't work. But I didn't really realize that at first. At first I was just like, oh, it doesn't work in the van. But finally, I stood outside the van with my phone and I'm like, oh, look, good Wi-Fi. And then I went inside the van with my phone and I'm like, bad Wi-Fi. So it's the metal. I looked it up online and yeah, metal blocks Wi-Fi signals. If you didn't know that, now you do. Um, but somehow it doesn't block the cellular signals as much. I don't understand that. They're both radio waves. Maybe it's just that one's a... a it's got to be it. It's that one's at a higher frequency than the other, and that one works, and this one, this one doesn't. So, a Faraday cage, huh? Yeah, is that the word for it? Yeah. So basically, that's what I'm. I'm sitting in a Faraday cage right here. I guess I'd be protected from all sorts of radiation. It'd be amazing in here. Um, <laughs> uh, but I finally figured it out. The area in the front cab with um with all the glass, there's not as much metal up there, that gets good Wi-Fi. So all I have to do is run a cable from the back cargo area to the front cab and put this little Wi-Fi repeater thing that I got up there and um, I'm good to go. I can get Wi-Fi in the van. So I could, may I could maybe stream by sitting outside of a Starbucks, for example, or something like that, or some other spot that has great Wi-Fi. Um, I'll get it all dialed in, so this will be a super duper awesome streaming band. The length of the metal limits the pass band. Oh, is that it? That's got it. Yeah, Pete and Wally. Ah, yep. I never, <laughs> I feel like an idiot. I feel like an idiot for the longest time. I'm like, Wi Fi doesn't work in the band, man. But it, uh, I'll get it to work. Yeah, radio has long wavelengths, right? Yeah, so I'm I'm stoked. I'm making a game I love. Um, it's another. This is this game's in the Songbringer universe. It's a multiplayer, and uh, I got this whole key art image going now. Let's get this icon created. I'll finish up this whole whole like mocking up the arena today at some point. We'll keep it small first. And we'll save this as a ping for now. And we'll make it 1,000 pixels. And we'll put this into icons folder. Okay, first thing, let's do, let's convert that into a Mac icon. Whoa. Oh, I forgot to tweet. Oh, well. There's a late tweet for you. Um, it's called iConvert. I think. This is the one. This one works pretty well. Drag a file? You got it. I can drag a file like a badass. I can drag files all day. I'm a professional file dragon. That. What the heck happened there? <laughs> I'm a professional file tracking, isn't it? Like crashed finder right there. <laughs> like what's the worst thing you could do? Just dragging a file. Crash finder. Oh. Where was I? Let's try it one more time. We got this place we're gonna drag the file to. We're going to go ahead and drag the file. <laughs> you got to watch this, huh? Yeah, watch this. Watch a professional 
crash his computer while he's trying to drag a file. Only pros can do that. Only pros can do that and live. Let's put it that way. <laughs> they said Macs are good. <laughs> They're definitely not today. What just happened? I totally selected that. Oh. Oh. It was there. It's just this website changed, and um, I said to scroll down. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to watch, watch some crashing going on? This is the one. I want this ICNS one. Bam, we got that, and we also want the ICO. Alright, sweet. Let's get these put in their proper places. Let's alliterate just a little more. Um, this is technically a spin-off of Songbringer. Yeah. Um, the sequel will come at some point. Uh, probably next game. So a couple years I'll be working on the sequel to Songbringer. But I, I wanted to take a little break, do a little spin-off here. This is a spin-off, a multiplayer game. It's real-time, online. It'll be Songbringer-style combat, uh, but this 3D voxel world, and it's Last Man Standing gameplay with the boss in the middle, and when you die, you get to fight on for the team that killed you, for the person that killed you. So it kind of looks like this, except for not with, well, not with all the glowing whiteness there. But it's a 3D engine, right? I've been working on the last six months, so the goal is to make it look like Songbringer, so it's like pixel art looking, but it's actually 3D, where you can rotate the camera and create this whole 3D world. So, yeah, that's what this game is about. As long as it's out by 2050, I'll be good, yeah? What happens in 2050? Yeah, I do kind of have a time frame for Wraithbinder. So Wraithbinder, in, uh, like... By this Christmas, I want to be about beta, and then maybe be in beta for a year. So maybe this will be coming out by 2021, or late 2020, possibly. But you guys will be able to play it much sooner. So you guys will be actually be able to play this game maybe by Christmas, because it's I'm gonna need as many beta testers as I can get. Super Paper Mario. <laughs> what well, I. I haven't played Super Paper Mario. He was all like 2D like that, but in a 3D world. Nice. Oh, cool. So it's like, it was like 2D and it was 3D. This, this, wow. Super Paper Mario. Yeah. So, hey, welcome to the live stream, Letter 10. All right, so let's get these icons put in there. Oh, did I already do that? Here we go. Icons. Wait, what happened to the ICO file? Why is it like that? Whoa, sweet. Yeah, I got you. Hey, though, thanks. <laughs> you forced people to buy my game under the threat of being crushed? Yeah? Did you have to crush anyone? Or was everyone compliant? How how authoritative is your authority in this matter? Okay, these are old. We get rid of those. Bye. And we want to go... I think this ICO file, maybe I just need to download it again. Why are there two of them? Let's try downloading it one more time. Because sometimes... I mean, that looked like it, it looked like it was just partially down. Yeah, there. Uh, no, what? It does have black on it. This is so weird. I guess I gotta try it one more time. It, your authority is just what other people perceive, right? So, but so that means that um, 
So that means you didn't have to crush anyone? Or you did crush people? People just crushed everywhere. Yeah, so this is weird. But these ICO files from this website are downloading all crazy. Let's see if we try and download it one more time. Yeah, oh yeah, no, that's this, this, that one. Let's just upload again. You want him anything? <laughs> oh man. So um dude, I'm so happy. I'm so glad that you um you forced people under penalty to play Songbringer. <laughs> I I'm so honored. Oh that's great. I tried to make the most kick ass game I could, you know what I mean? With Songbringer. I was like, what would what would be the and when I started it all, I was like, what would be the funnest game I could possibly play right now? The, the, whatever sounded the funnest to me was like, what if it was a procedural Zelda, where every time I played Zelda, it could be a different world, and so thus Songbringer was born. And then through the making of Songbringer, I just made, I tried to put as much quality as I possibly could into it. I was like, what could what could make this just the the best that I could possibly make it here? And that's how it all happened. Yeah. It, it felt more like Legend of Zelda than some actual Zelda games. That's cool, man. It could be the van corrupting these icons. It could definitely be that. Why doesn't it remember the folder? Okay, so the trick to this website is you gotta scroll... Nope. Yep. 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 Scroll down. Okay, let's try it downloading that icon file. This one's all... Uh, this website... I swear it used to work. Okay, with that... This one worked. Let's put this in the in the Mac um, project folder. Wraithbinder. All right, and we'll compile. Oh, sweet, look at that. It's got the right icon now. Yes. D yeah, cause I, um, I haven't found a good offline converter. Can you recommend an offline converter that can do uh, Mac and Windows icons? Last night it was snowing. Today, tonight's thunderstorms. Where are you at again, Whistle So? It's it's been crazy weather here too. Yesterday it was so sunny. I'm in San Francisco right now, and yesterday it was so sunny it was like too hot. And though did the connection die? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I'm totally dropping a ton of frames today. It could be my end of it. Uh, but I'm just going to keep going until this thing dies. It was 98. Clouds and rain. Whoa. Yeah. 98 with clouds and rain? Where are you at? Singapore? Chiang Mai? Okay, I'm going to close Xcode and then reopen it and hope the icon has changed. Oklahoma! Oh yeah, you just you just you just live there right now, huh? It sucks. Oh man, sorry to hear that. Six different things in one day? Really? So you guys have like more seasons than you need. And more seasons per day than you need. Check it out. Look at that. That's an actual icon. Ha 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 And if I run it, um, and then like I alt tab out, alt tab back in, we got a good, got a good icon file. It's taking a second to run here. You have either dry cold or humid cold, and the rest is basically summer. Dang! Okay, so if I alt tab out, ah, oh, it's still got the old icon. 
Oh, maybe that's because um, we need to rebuild all. And while it's rebuilding all, hold on a second. Actually, let's stop rebuilding all. And then remove... Uh, I think I need to remove some files before I do this. Like, remove... Uh, build, debug... No, no. Build... build What? Where the heck is Rape Binder? Oh, because I just deleted it all. Oh, wait, yeah, okay, that actually works. Okay. Rebuild all. So while it's rebuilding all, um, we'll go. See if we can get that icon file to work. Did, did I become rich after Songbringer? Like a billionaire? I wish. I, I wish, but I'm... I guess I'm glad I, I'm... Am I glad I'm not a billionaire? I'm, I guess I'm glad to be where I'm at, man. Still scrapping for, scrapping for everything, in a way. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't become a billionaire. I didn't even get rich. Um, but I did make a living. I've made a... a you know, really, really, if you actually look at what I made, um, I made about minimum wage. If you look at how many hours I worked on Songbringer versus how much money I made from Songbringer. You saw it everywhere? That's so cool. Yeah, I know. I, I wish it was bigger, too. Um, I, think it, I think it has a good niche following. You know what I mean? It didn't really turn out to be like a breakout indie success like some indie games are. I hope to have one of those breakout indie successes some point in my life. Um, you know, maybe Songbringer 2, maybe Wraithbinder, maybe Songbringer 3, something like that. One of these games will hopefully be a good big win, and I'll actually make some some riches from that, some good cash. But uh, but for now, I'm I'm totally supported. I got a great publisher. Songbringer did well enough to actually make money, which in today's market is is actually pretty huge. If you look at the actual number of games that came out in the year that Songbringer came out, just versus two years before it, like if you go from 2017 back to 2015 and you look at the number of games that were released, it's like thousands, it's like orders of magnitude less practically. So with so many more games in the market today, it's amazing that Songbringer made money. And I'm I'm actually like, whoa, that was a huge success. So Yeah, you, it's fun to like game dev, but yeah, gamers can be cheap about things. It's almost like, you know, like yeah, they just want everything for free sometimes. Uh, Jace Kelly, if I dislike programming and art, how would I how would I recommend getting into the game industry? Okay, um, what do you like? That was that would be what I would start with. If you if you like an area of the game industry, like you like sound design, or maybe you like music, or maybe you're a composer, um, those are kind of or maybe you like business. Maybe you love maybe you're a business wizard, or maybe you like um, design. Maybe you just want to design games. Or maybe you're a voice actor, right? Or maybe you're, uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many ways to get into the game industry that aren't programming and art. There's actually a lot of them. There's, there's just project management. You could be a project manager. You could be a producer. Your end goal would be game design, but you want to start somewhere else. Why not just start with game design? How did it do on? How did Songbringer do on Switch? It did pretty good. Yeah. I thought it would be the platform too. Um, it actually did really well on on Switch, but not again, not like freaking breakout success style like indie awesomeness. Like some sometimes you see in some indie games, they're just amazing, sell so well. Um, but it did well on Switch compared compared to everything else, and yeah, it did awesome. What's up, Kobe? Oh yeah, cinematography, translating, 
Um, there's testing too. You know, I know you want to get into game design, but uh, testing testing is huge, man. Game development companies need testers like crazy. You can get you can be just a game tester, get paid well, and eventually up your way into other roles. Like maybe you can start at a game at a company working as a game tester, and you work your way way up to design. I know some people that have actually done that, literally. Yeah, Kobad, this is this is huge right here. He's giving you some amazing advice. You don't want to be just an ideas guy. Yes, because everyone has ideas, and it's just like you, you, you meet another ideas guy, you're like, ugh, another one of these ideas people that only has ideas, they're not ever going to do anything about them, and they think that their ideas are worth money. You know what I mean? Why do people think their ideas are worth money? This is not how the world works. You take your ideas and you turn them into reality, and that can make you money. But not just ideas. And you're never going to get paid for an idea. Some people actually do. You can actually get paid by some companies to just come up with ideas. But my point is, most people don't. Ever. Yeah, Switch, Switch kind of is getting a little bit crowded now that they're, they've opened the doors. At first, if you came out on Switch in the very first like six months of Switch being out, you're just like, boom, gold mine. But after a year of Switch being out, it started getting more saturated. You've been learning Blender, After Effects, Pixel Art. Sweet, man. I'm glad my game's been inspirational as well as others. Um, so wait, why why are you been learning like art stuff if you're not really if you don't really like art? Or maybe maybe did you start doing art and you're like, wait a minute, I don't really like this. Yeah, Q Q and A is a big, big part of game development companies, and you know what could be, what could, oh check that out the CEO of Obsidian started his Q A. Wow, yeah, no, you know what I mean. That's a great way to break into the game industry. Be a Q A, and work there. You know, once you're a Q A at some company, just start work, keep working on your game design skills. You know, working on that, and then what? And then it's. At some point, at the right moment, you're going to show your game design to some person in your company, and they're going to go, "Whoa, this guy's got some game design talent. Maybe we'll we'll lift this guy up to a game designer or try him out as a game designer for a while." Oh, you've been doing it since '98. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you can do it anything in your life at any point. Yeah. Yeah, the hardest thing about getting in the game industry is just getting in. Yeah. Yes, this is a really good point Kaba brings up. Like, you really don't you don't get paid that much in the game dev industry comparatively. With my my level of programming skills and my experience as a programmer of over two decades, I could be programming in a company here in the Bay Area for a hundred and ten to hundred and twenty grand a year. And and I'm making a quarter of that developing games you know what I mean well or at least if you look at if you look at all the time I spent on Songbringer and um, like the actual number of hours I spent on Songbringer and divide that by how much money I made you know what I mean it doesn't turn out to be that much because most game game developers are more of like passionate type people that work on these things as passion projects so you pour so much time into it and you just don't really get as much returns Yeah, maybe 150 plus in the Bay, or 300, yeah, definitely. Especially as a programmer that works into some kind of, like, management role or something like that. Yeah, yeah, the, I, know what you, I know what you have to deal with living in SF, because I'm kind of living there, living here right now. Yeah. Right, yeah, so, you know, if the money's not everything to you, it's not for me. You know, I love, I love, I love doing what I love. I love creating stuff. I love making art. I love programming. I love making music. I love game design. I love every aspect of making games so much that I would do it for free. And luckily I'm getting paid. So, <laughs> you know, damn, is that some, that's amazing. People making 250 K. No wonder people can afford the homes in the Bay area. There's like, it's in the San Francisco peninsula. It is hard to find a house that is tiny as tiny can be for less than a million dollars. 
Yeah, SoCal is a lot more a lot more reasonable. Yeah, I used to live in Southern Cal for a good ten years, so I know what you mean. Yep, yep. Six hundred K house is nothing. It's a hovel. It's somebody's shack. But yeah, West Hills. Yeah, yeah. Newport Beach is great. Heck yeah. It is really nice. It's nice there. Yeah. The rent isn't rent kind of expensive there though. I can't. I don't even. I don't even know. Cause I haven't ever lived there. Wait, did this work? Oh, this just keeps failing. Let's find another icon. Converter. Yeah, wait, what, what are the issues from programmers massing in places? That's not bad. Oh, but, it, oh, considering it's a one bedroom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Create ICO file from paint. I think I do have an actual um, offline converter for, for, for Windows icons. <laughs> yeah. What, what is that? There really is a correlation, though. There really is a huge correlation between homelessness and crazy expensive homes. What is that about? All right. No need to crop. No need to apply styles. Download your icons. Yeah, yeah, you'd be rich uh, back home, right? I'm from Oregon, so I know what you mean. Back in Oregon, um, I could live pretty well even doing what I'm doing, just making games, you know? You could buy a Tesla in a house, yeah. Which is kind of like, why not? You know? You, you want, wait a minute, can I do that from Photoshop? Can you actually save as an ICO file? My Mine can't. Mine cannot. Yeah, lo dude, more and more companies are completely remote these days. Yeah. Oh dang. Yeah, it's good it's good to make a good wage, man. Oh, where where there we go. Yes, this icon file turned out all right. We're just going to use that one. Um go to the Windows Oh, I don't even have a Windows folder yet for this. Duh. Let's make a Windows folder. We'll throw this icon there. And you know what? We'll throw it in the icons folder as well. Just to be just to be like, yeah. Yes, definitely. You can if you're not constrained to one city, you can make a company that's like really diverse you can make a company that's like covers all the bases nicely actually maybe I'll just delete this Windows folder for now we're not gonna need that just yet and now we've got okay cool that's all I wanted to do for now so Michael, oh, you know what? One more thing, actually. <laughs> this is nice. You can actually go uh, open it with preview. Yeah, Obsidian, dude. Hey, I. By the way, they're taking the whole company. Is yeah, that's great. Uh, that's that is something that you should be mentioned to anybody else that's like 
tr looking to get into the game industry, it's really fun to work for game companies like 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 Obsidian doing that where they're taking everybody to the new Avengers movie and paying for the tickets. A lot of companies do stuff like that, and that's just fun. Oh, you got a plug-in? See, I should I should have some kind of plug-in, but I don't. I'm just relying on online converters because I love it. I love relying. I love being reliant on being online. It's so awesome. I love being connected to the grid. It's the best. Oh yeah. So if I got this icon open, like uh, no, Command I style open, and then I go to this and I go edit. I can't cut where they changed the way this works. Maybe I open it with preview actually. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, Kobe, I watched your guys' trailer for um, Outer Worlds. It's Outer Worlds, right? That's the name of your game you're working on? It was a couple days ago I watched it, so I can't I don't know if I'm remembering the name correctly. But Outer Worlds looks awesome. I just gotta say, that game looks amazing. It looks super fun. And it's by the by the original creators of Fallout. How dope is that? All right. So I wanted to go to this folder and back here, and just add an icon to the Raid Binder folder so it looks dope. Bam. Wraith Binder. G G, G Healthcare. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Sweet, we got an icon. All right. Oh, I was rebuilding in the background, so maybe if I run it now, and we alt tab out, and we alt tab back in, we'll we'll see this nice little icon now. It's little things like this, like putting an icon on your game's folder and like changing the ASCII text to the top of every CPP file, little things like that don't seem like they make a big difference, but they make a big difference psychologically as you're Yeah, Yeah, not, that's not liking that icon. It's not showing me any icon right there. Why is that? That's one reason to that's really awesome for working and working with a team like that. That's great to have that whole like community and that sense of um, sense of uh, companionship, almost friends and stuff like that that you can build working at companies. That's really neat. That's something I kind of miss out on being a solo game developer. Is I don't really have a crew of people I can go see Avengers with at any time. You know what I mean? Kind of just solo. I need to build up my my friend crew manually <laughs> i use the word manually to describe building friendships i'm such an engineer yeah right yeah <laughs> Man manually that's even funnier thinking of it like man oh what a great day. What was I doing here? I was going to inspect the folder and figure out why the icon's not working. Um, let's just let's start with this. Why is Wraithbinder... Why is the actual thing not exporting an icon? Oh, it uses the info p list. That's right. There's my info p list file. It's set to the right icon. Oh, maybe I think you might have to build phase copy the copy the icon file. Oh, and I think I actually do that in my own special build script. Let's check out the build script. Figure out if there's something to do with the icon here. there was version said last platform type increment the build wait a minute why is there oh no that's all good okay 
the assets, touch the assets, make all the assets, update fonts, update shaders, update models. Build the game. Here, oh, here's the copying of the iPhone assets. I think it may be I need to copy um, the Mac assets as well. All right, yeah, man. Have a good time. Hang in with your better half. Catch you later, brother. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. It's good chatting with you, as always. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is say if it's a, if the platform is Mac, um, then we we copy some assets to the Mac folder. Let's go ahead and do the Mac folder being the first folder. Later. Okay, so if effective platform name, I think it's Mac OS or something like that. Copying assets to let's just do e exe desk the whole thing. I want to see the whole folder. If that's a folder, then copy in. Yeah, yeah, something like this. Copy. Oh, I probably want to do an R sync actually, but copying an icon is not too bad. So projects. Oh, I need to. I should just confirm this. Hold on. I want to confirm that Wraithbinder build Wraithbinder D. Oh, that runs it. Oops, I want to show the contents of this. Here we go. I can show the contents there. And then I think, the, uh, where does the icon file? Oh, there it is. It's got an icon already. Why doesn't it have it for the app? Oh. I know what I could do. I could build Songbringer. Let's build Songbringer. Look at Songbringer's app file and figure out why Songbringer's icon works. What? You're not supposed to redo. Oh, did I save Shadow? Okay, that's that's compiling. We'll let that compile for a second. Uh, Songbringer, it's going to be in Songbringer's build. I think it works the same exact. Yeah, it's, of course it is. There. Why does that have an icon? It's nothing different. It's just this, like this folder somehow. Oh. I know. Let's do this. Let's go. LS. AL build debug songbringer.app. What? There's no icon file there. Okay, that's that's fine. Hmm, so maybe we don't need to do any of this stuff. Why doesn't it have the icon? Well, I maybe mean, I'll just debug this later. I'm not sure if this is going to be worth figuring out right now, but well, let's see. Let's poke our, poke our head in this folder here. Oh, this is supposed to be LSAL. Yeah, same thing. Hmm. That's 130k, this one's 300k.
I don't know. I don't know why the icon is not showing up when we run it. What if we just run it from the command line? Oops, I did my build script wrong. Messed that up. Yeah, still we have this no icon -y file. What if we run it from Xcode? So there's no need to copy, oh, yeah, the build script. Gotta fix that. There's no need for any of this. Confirm that, the file is there. Um, I don't stream that often. I really only stream about two times a week, something like that. Maybe one time a week. Um, at one point in my streaming career, you could say, I was streaming like five to six days a week. Uh, but it's a lot of work to pull off of just even one live stream. Um, so I kind of got to I gotta contain the days that I live streamed in just a couple of weeks to kind of get the most done with the game, you know? But yeah, I try and get a couple streams in here and there just to just kind of be face to face. <laughs> I use the word face to face, but I guess just to show my face. I don't know. The point is to just like be around, to like, uh, uh, I don't know, hang out. To not be alone, really. You know, I'm kind of alone making this game, so why not hang out while making a game, right? Oh, sh I haven't updated that forever. Yeah, I'm sitting right now, and I used to stand up all the time. So, yeah, I work on the project five days a week. Um, I'm trying to be healthier about my game development for this project. Uh, Songbringer, I worked seven days a week. Literally, seven days a week. Like, there's very few vacations I took in the entire three and a half years of making Songbringer. I only went to Burning Man once. That was like a one week off at one point. So it was a really unhealthy amount of work. And um, this project, I'm like, no more. No more of this seven days a week stuff. It's not healthy. You know, um, it's not healthy for many reasons, you know, like not just your body, but like relationships and your your life. That You're having fun. Are you having fun in life? You should be. I mean, making games is fun, but you really need to have other kinds of fun in your life too, you know? So this project, five days a week, um, is my... Uh, is my target, you know, and I've uh, been, it's been, it's, it's made things so much better, you know what I mean? I can enjoy life and make games. That's how it should be. Well, I can't figure out why. Oh, let's try, yeah, I was going to try running it from Xcode. Let's try running it from Xcode. See if that makes a difference and somehow its icon will appear magically. Ah, still not there. You want to learn to code, but it seems daunting. Well, I would if you want to if you really want to learn, but you feel daunted. You know, it's just like breaking it down to the the smallest steps you can. Right, start with the hello world. Um, I would recommend a hello world in a C-based language myself, but then, you know, there's, it depends on kind of what kind of games you want to make and what kind of game engine maybe you'd be attracted to using. Do you think you're going to be the kind of person that wants to make games in, uh, Unity? Do you want to make games in something like Unreal? Would you rather be coding in the command line and doing everything by hand? What kind of person are you code-wise? Yeah, you've been trying all these tutorials. It just hurts, huh? Uh, maybe it's not your thing. Maybe that's not. Maybe you just don't like it. If you did, you like it. Like, did you like any of it? Any programming? I wouldn't do anything you don't want if you don't like. Don't force yourself to do something that's just because you think you should. You know? Yeah, Unity is pretty easy. C sharp's really yeah. C sharp's really great to get into. Lots of coding. And what, what's great about a language like C-sharp or C or 
C++ is that you're, the C-based language is, is kind of really universal. If you learn any kind of C-based language, you're going to kind of know a lot of other C-based languages. They won't be that, they won't be that much different to kind of get to know the specific idiosyncrasies of that language. Yeah, small goals. Oh, it's part of the Launchpad database. Is that what that that icon is? The only way I can temporarily solve the problem is by rebooting. Okay, so maybe if I rebooted, the icon would have showed up. Hmm, I think I'm just going to reboot. Okay, well, all right. So let's kind of like wrap the stream up for now. Um, we got an icon created today. That's cool. Glad that's got done. I think just by restarting, I'll be able to get that going. Do I have a crowdfund for this new game? Not yet. I'm planning on one, probably. Uh, yeah. This is a this is a totally different game than Songbringer because it's multiplayer. It's uh, probably going to be free to play. I'm not I can't speak to it exactly just yet. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh, so appreciate it. Yeah. Um, what else got done today? Stream. Uh, this whole like so the arena. I mean, this is kind of like a the diagram for how this bat these battlegrounds will look. These all these P's are where the players will start. The items are where items are going to be at. These little gray lines are pathways you can walk on. This is where the boss is in the middle. And these are temples where you can upgrade your wraith. If you're a wraith and you're dead, basically, and you're a wraith, um, and you're fighting on for the player that killed you, you can turn into a fire wraith or an ice wraith or a lightning wraith or an acid wraith. And uh, so that's what the battlegrounds are going to look like. So I started mocking that battlegrounds up in, the, in there. So that'll be, be fun to have that all done. You become famous? Thanks, man. Oh, dude, appreciate it. Aw. Dude, thank you. I really appreciate that. Really, really appreciate that. It uh it's um it's good to have some like encouragement like that because sometimes it can be really hard making games when people uh dog your stuff and they t tell you your game sucks and you know you're Especially when you're launching a game, oh my god, the, it's, it's like going through a going through a rite of passage where you're walking across flames and everyone's spouting hate at you. You know, it's like well, everyone points out the worst parts of your game ever. You know, and it makes you feel like, oh, I never want to make a game again because they, you know, they treated me so horrible. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Your game sucks the sadness out of me. <laughs> Man, I appreciate that. That's rad. Yeah, dude. See ya. Um, as in risk, dude. Fun seeing you as well, man. Hope uh, hope everything's great. And um, so that'll be it for this stream. And uh, you guys have a good night too. And um, we'll catch you all on the next stream. So, peace. Thanks.